Yes, you read the title right, and yes, it is true, and also yes, it is a subscription. I know some of you came here to tell me that. SolidWorks now costs less than Disney+, Plus, which means you are closer than ever to finally building that Star Wars helmet you've been talking about since the debut of The Mandalorian. Access to genuine SolidWorks is now available at only $15 per month, and even as cheap as $4 a month if you purchase a year at a time for $48. If you happen to be part of a makerspace group, you can even get your first year for free. Obviously, these prices and the information in this video are subject to change, but that's where we are currently as of March 2024. 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers, as it's officially known, is specifically geared toward hobbyists and DIY enthusiasts who want to take advantage of the commercial-grade capability of SolidWorks CAD for casual projects without taking out a five-figure loan. It's also an awesome way for new users to learn the software, especially those who don't have access to a commercial license or qualify for the student edition. If you want to check it out, look for a link to the product page and other helpful resources in the description below, and stick around to learn more about all the differences between commercial SolidWorks and 3D Experience SolidWorks for makers. Before we get started, I just want to give a big shout out to Eric Beatty. He did a ton of research on this subject, and he's been an amazing figure in the SolidWorks user group community basically forever. So a huge thanks to him for everything, and a big congratulations on winning SolidWorks Champion of the Year. Let's do this. To be clear right from the start, the Maker version of SolidWorks is fundamentally identical to any other version of SolidWorks you may have used in the past, when it comes to core functionality. Sketching, features, assemblies, drawings, etc. All the design tools are there, including servicing and weldments and sheet metal. So unless you've relied heavily on specific add-ins, which we'll be discussing in a bit, you probably won't notice much difference at all when going about your day-to-day -day work. However, as the package name suggests, there are a handful of differences between 3D Experience SolidWorks for Makers and traditional commercial SolidWorks. Some of these differences are basically inconsequential, while others might be pretty important to you. So naturally, let's start with the most important difference first, and that is file compatibility. Anything you design or save in the Maker's Edition will be incompatible with any other version of SolidWorks, including both the commercial version and the student version. That includes this RC car camera mount I built to be 3D printed for my friend Oliver, which was originally designed with a commercial license. If you attempt to open a SOLIDWORKS file that was saved in the Maker version in some other form of SOLIDWORKS, it'll simply fail, and there's no way to truly remove this incompatibility. In case you didn't catch that a moment ago, it is possible to open commercial SOLIDWORKS files with the Maker's version, but saving them in the Maker's version permanently marks them as Maker's files. And again, there's no way to convert them back, so be careful with that. As I was researching for this video, I very nearly saved over the only copy of this loft bed design I've been working on for several days, which wouldn't have been the end of the world, but would have been rather annoying. Back up your files, kids. Now, all that being said, the Maker version does offer the ability to export neutral format files such as Step, IGIS, Parasolid, and several others, and these formats can be opened by essentially all 3D CAD programs. So this doesn't mean you can't 3D print or otherwise manufacture your designs, it just means you'll lose your feature history if you want to share your files externally. We've also found that some CAD programs will open SOLIDWORKS Maker files even in their native format through translation, but this too results in the loss of the feature tree. In any case, it's something for you to explore. Alright, let's address the other elephant in the room, shall we? Add-in support. Now, this one is probably going to hurt some feelings, but unfortunately, certain add-ins are simply unavailable for the Maker's edition of SOLIDWORKS, and this includes the very popular SOLIDWORKS simulation. None of the Express add-ins are included either, so this means no structural analysis with Simulation Express, or CFD with Flow Express, no DriveWorks design automation, and no DFM. And this is no big deal if you weren't expecting to use these anyway, but they're pretty powerful tools that are available in other editions of SOLIDWORKS, including the student version, so consider opting for the student version instead if you do qualify for it. Sadly, this also extends to most third-party add-ins, including essentially all of the popular ones such as Power Surfacing and ExactFlat. 
We're hoping that this changes as the 3D Experience platform continues to focus on better integration, but for now you can take solace in the fact that several core add-ins are still available including Toolbox, Scan to 3D, CircuitWorks, AutoTrace, FeatureWorks, and several others. Interestingly, it has been reported that certain third-party Space Mouse and 3D Printer add-ins actually do function, so that may be worth exploring if you're interested. Finally, while the Photo View and SolidWorks CAM add-ins are also unavailable in this version, there are included alternatives for both of them, along with some other bonus programs that we'll be talking about near the end of this video, so be sure to stick around for that. Now that that's out of the way, let's talk about a few of the details that are different, but a little less consequential. The 3D Experience part. Pretty much everyone has heard of 3D Experience by now, but I will certainly admit that it can be a bit confusing. And I think it's fair to say that there are a lot of users who either aren't interested or aren't quite ready to use it, and that's totally understandable. When it comes to SOLIDWORKS for makers, just know that you can use as few or as many of the 3D Experience tools as you would like. Now this part is going to be a little long, but it'll likely address some of your questions regarding 3D Experience and the differences you can expect to run into with the maker's version of SOLIDWORKS. I should also mention that the points in this particular section also apply to the commercial 3D Experience version of SOLIDWORKS, not just the maker version. Number one. 3D Experience does not mean that SOLIDWORKS is running in the cloud. This is a common misconception. SOLIDWORKS is still installed locally, and that means you'll still need to meet the minimum system hardware requirements to run it. This is not a browser-based version of SOLIDWORKS. Speaking of installation, that's a bit different too, but the instructions provided after you purchase SOLIDWORKS for Makers are fairly straightforward and we've included an installation support page as a link in the description if you need it. Assuming that you have that part handled though, let's go ahead and move on to the next point. 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS can be launched in several different ways. Let's quickly cover how to launch the software as that can be a bit confusing as well. After successfully installing 3D Experience for Makers, which occurs on the 3D Experience platform, the SOLIDWORKS Connected app should appear with an open button next to it on the welcome page. If you haven't customized any dashboards, this should be visible as soon as you log into the 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS tenant, but I did notice on some smaller monitors especially that this area can become hidden, and you may need to adjust the size of some of the panes by dragging them in order to see this open button. Alternatively, you can click the compass at the top left expand the My Roles section if necessary, click 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS Professional, and then click SOLIDWORKS Connected. The Compass is also where you'll find the other applications included within the Maker package, which we will be discussing soon. If you're having trouble getting to the 3D Experience tenant, it can be accessed from the Get Started email sent by Dassault System when you initially purchased, or by using the link, which again, we've included below. We'd also recommend bookmarking or favoriting this URL for future reference. After launching SOLIDWORKS for the first time from the welcome menu of the tenant, a desktop shortcut will be created that can be used from then on. And this is realistically the most common way for most users to launch the program. While we're at it, I just wanna quickly clarify that 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS for Makers is the name of the package that you purchased, which includes multiple applications. And the SOLIDWORKS program that you'll actually see in the 3D Experience platform will be called SOLIDWORKS Connected. It's not actually listed as SOLIDWORKS for makers here, but this is correct. To make things more confusing, this 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS for makers package contains several different roles, which are basically just different collections of applications. And in this case, the SOLIDWORKS that you are looking for is part of the 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS professional role. Ultimately, if you're confused, just launch SOLIDWORKS Connected and make sure that the background screen in the viewport says SOLIDWORKS Maker. If it does, that means you're in the right place. If you decide to explore the other apps included within the package, and you know the role that the app is associated with, again, we'll talk more about this in a bit, you can navigate to the compass, click the role, and then click the application. If you don't know the role, you can always browse through the alphabetically sorted list in the My App section. All right. On to the next point. 3D Experience versions of SOLIDWORKS allow for files to be saved to, opened from, and managed in the cloud. 
Two of the main features of 3D Experience are cloud storage and revision control, which can be great if you want to use them. Uh, and you'll notice some differences in the open menu, the save options, and the presence of a new 3D Experience tab in the task pane because of this. But again, you don't actually have to use any of these. By default, saving a new file will take me to my local hard drive with the option to save to 3D Experience, and the same is true for the open command. If you choose to store files on 3D Experience, you'll have the option to apply bookmarks for quick searching later on down the road, along with other revision control tools that can be really helpful, especially if you're collaborating on projects with others. You can use the 3D Experience task pane tab to perform a lot of these functions as well, and this area is particularly helpful if you're collaborating on assemblies with multiple components. Check it out if you're interested. There's a lot of cool stuff here, but again, you don't have to use any of these tools unless you want to. In fact, you can even customize your user interface to remove the 3D experience commands and task pane if you wish. There are a couple other minor UI differences as well, and one particularly tricky one comes along with drawings. If you're interested in saving a sheet format template specifically, that's now available using the save as new command, whereas in other versions, it exists as a separate file menu option. All other template types are created using the save as new command as well, which may be confusing considering the new save as template option, which is also available in the file menu for the maker version. This command is used to create and share templates within the 3D experience platform, so you won't need to use it if you're only working locally. All that being said, the UI overall is about 99% the same, and getting used to these differences really shouldn't take long at all. Next, 3D Experience licenses are hosted online and connected to your 3D Experience account. That does not mean that you have to be connected to the internet 24 seven in order to use the software. In fact, you can very easily go offline for up to 30 days at a time or up to your renewal date if you're on a monthly subscription. Just click the icon near the top right of the SOLIDWORKS interface with your initials on it, then click Work Offline. Then just choose the number of days that you want to work offline, click OK, and you won't have to reconnect again until this time has expired. That pretty much sums up all the differences specifically related to the 3D Experience platform, but I will leave you with one final quirk that bit me a few more times than I would have expected. 3D Experience versions of SOLIDWORKS can't be opened by directly opening a SOLIDWORKS file. And it never occurred to me how frequently I booted up SOLIDWORKS by just opening a file from Windows Explorer until I got my hands on the Maker Edition. Unless SOLIDWORKS is already open, double-clicking a file or attempting to right-click and open with SOLIDWORKS from the shortcut menu will lead you to the same prompt. SOLIDWORKS has to be launched from the platform or by using the desktop shortcut that was created. And you can either click within this prompt to go to the platform and open it there, or just cancel the prompt and use the desktop shortcut. It doesn't really matter, but this one got me way more often than I expected, so be aware. All right, we've saved the best for last, so as promised, let's move on to bonus programs. Purchasing 3D Experience SOLIDWORKS for makers actually entitles you to quite a bit more than just SOLIDWORKS. You also get access to SOLIDWORKS Visualize, XDesign, XShape, multiple CNC programming applications, and a ton of other miscellaneous programs as part of the 3D Experience platform. Again, I want to reiterate just one more time, you're under no obligation to use these tools, but they do offer some pretty interesting benefits. And in the case of Visualize and the CNC applications, they also offer an alternative to a couple of the missing add-ins of our Maker version. So let's take a quick look at a few of the standouts here. SOLIDWORKS Visualize is a photo rendering program, like a camera, for your CAD data. It can be used to produce incredibly realistic images and even animations well before your designs are actually manufactured. And it can also help you understand what your finished product might actually look like, whereas CAD programs, mm, not so much. I've personally had a lot of fun with Visualize. It's one of my favorite programs, and I definitely recommend checking it out. XDesign is one of two applications that are known as X apps included here, the other being X Shape. One key detail that makes both of these programs unique is that they do in fact run in the cloud, so to speak. They're both fully contained within your browser on the 3D Experience platform, they don't require any installation in order to run, and they're always up to date. As you might expect, files that you create are stored on the platform, but you're also able to import files from your hard drive, and these apps can also collaborate directly with each other and with SOLIDWORKS files too. 
This does mean that you need persistent internet access to use these tools, but they're worth at least checking out, in my opinion. You'll probably find that X-Design feels suspiciously familiar, and that's because it is. Saying that X-Design is essentially SolidWorks Lite would probably make some people a little grumpy on both sides of the aisle, but that's the honest feeling that I get when I work with these tools. Most icons are nearly the same, the command manager feels familiar, and a lot of the same basic functionality you'd find in a standard SolidWorks license can be found here too. The workflow you would use to build a part is basically identical. Even mouse gestures made it in. X-Shape, on the other hand, has a very special quality, and as a quick note, you can actually swap over to this app from X-Design just by pressing the X key and continue working with the same part. Though the look and feel of X-Shape is essentially the same as X-Design, the feature capability is not. Here you'll find a whole tab of subdivision surface tools available, and I should point out that this is a capability you won't even find in the most powerful versions of Bonafide SolidWorks unless you're running a third-party add-in. Now, admittedly, I'm not particularly skilled in sub surfacing, but the potential here is incredible, and some of the things I've seen people do with these tools is really impressive. Next up, we actually have a package of several applications to suit most of your basic CNC programming needs, including laser and water jet cutting, shop floor machining, and even wire EDM. I expect the most popular here will probably be the shop floor machining application, which allows you to automatically identify geometric features, select tools, and make manual adjustments for milling. Uh, simulation tools are also included to check for collisions and proper tool pathing, and most users should also be able to use the included post processors as well to produce G-code and get parts ready for manufacturing. Lastly, the miscellaneous programs, and there are a lot of them. Many of these can be helpful, especially if you're the kind who appreciates revision control and PLM, and I do encourage you to explore them, but going over every included application is well outside the scope of this video, which is already long enough as it is. One that you really should consider taking a look at, though, is the 3D Swim app. 3D Swim is an acronym for Say What You Mean, and this application is your connection to the other 27,000 plus hobbyists and makers who are already using the platform, many of whom are really good at this stuff. Here you can share what you know, learn what you don't, and show off your latest creations, but simply clicking this app might be a little confusing when the page shows up empty. See, right now I'm essentially in my own personal data bubble, known as a tenant. To access the maker community, click the text just under your name near the top right. Then click to sew system to switch over to that tenant. If you have a smaller screen, this may take the form of a cloud icon instead, so watch out for that. From here, you should see several communities that you've been added to, and if you scroll down, you'll see two maker communities, one for support and questions, and another for you to show off your hard work and see what others are up to. So get connected, ask questions, and make some friends. All right, I think that's all we have for this one. I know this has been a really long video, but I also really hope that it's helped and that you feel at least a little bit more confident in taking a look at SolidWorks for Makers. And I also just wanna say thank you if you've made it this far. I've been working with SolidWorks as my main CAD tool for a lot of years now, but I do remember how difficult it was to get access to a copy at certain times in my life before the Maker version was available especially when I was looking for my first engineering job and I wasn't a student anymore. And I really do like that there's finally a version of SolidWorks that's available for people who just want to create cool stuff. So check it out. And if there's anything that I missed or any questions that you have, feel free to drop a comment. I'll do my best to answer. And also let me know what you want to learn about next. I'm always looking for video ideas that you actually want to see. Last but not least, if you want to learn SolidWorks or 3D experience or anything else, from industry experts with decades of experience and avoid going through the pain of learning on your own like I did, consider subscribing to the channel for weekly tips and tricks and also check out the Solid Professor website. They've got hundreds of on-demand courses from absolute beginners to certified experts and they can help you get started on that Star Wars helmet. Thanks for watching.